My name is Alexis Rockman and I'm a painter. I grew up in Manhattan. I was an only child. I spent a lot of time on my own drawing animals and was obsessed with animals and went to the Museum of Natural History all the time and collected reptiles and amphibians and loved to draw them. And I look back on it now and I got a tremendous amount of support from both my parents. My mom's an archaeologist and obviously you can see that there's a connection to that um, through my interest in history and human endeavors. My dad was a jazz musician. He died in 92. And um, I hated jazz when I was a kid and now of course I play Lester Young all the time. ended up going to School of Visual Arts. And then I gradually realized that if I could be a painter and bring to the world what I was interested in, which is the history of natural history, that maybe there would be a place for me. And I was lucky enough to start showing in 1985 in the East Village and really never looked back. I actually started out painting on canvas and they would start out almost as color field paintings and I would put characters from natural history illustrations that I was interested in, change things around slightly to tell what I believed was a more credible story about what was really happening in terms of pollution and the biodiversity crisis. In the early 90s, I started to become more and more interested in the history of science and travel and expeditions and collaborating with scientists I simultaneously went on a trip to Guyana where I went camping with two other artist friends for two months in a place where Darwin had been, who is obviously a very important figure from the history of science, and William Beebe, one of the great popularizers of the natural world in the earlier part of the 20th century. He's the director of the Bronx Zoo. And this project is very much a outgrowth of that um, process. So what I'm doing now is I'm sort of just getting a feel for the, um, the type of paint that this is gonna be made out of. And then tomorrow, I'm gonna try to come in early and paint the whole, this whole group of the cheeses and the bread and the, port, the, the silverware and the plates and stuff um, in one go, almost like a Mirandi, like very, very quickly. I would say that, I mean, there's more human activity in this project than probably anything else I've done overtly, but anything to do with the biodiversity crisis or climate change. But the biodiversity crisis is a relic or the sad hangover of human activity. The HMS Erebus, 
um, for instance, from 1845 that was lost looking for the Northwest Passage, it focuses on from the perspective of the ecology, the polar bears that were there, what happened to the humans. I started thinking about Antarctica or the Arctic and wanted to sort of change up my palette and geography. Well, some interesting things happened and they just discovered some artifacts on this small island um, in the Arctic Circle that, um, and they had photographs of, of many of these artifacts. So I built this painting around the artifacts that were in the New York Times Magazine that they had beautiful photographs of. And I sort of started to think about the local ecology and what would be a compelling scenario and just built this, this painting out of that. The Raft of the Medusa, which is partially based on the famous painting by Jericho. I decided I was gonna do a painting about what happened to the raft after the survivors were rescued and the local ecology off the coast of Senegal where the actual event happened um, unfolded. So I looked into birds that were endemic to the coast of Senegal. Um, I looked at what time of year the, uh, the event happened and I tried to chart what migrating birds would be where in the area, and then I looked into the species of shark that would be local to the area as well, and made a little still life based on another painting of Jericho's of severed limbs from um, uh, the executed that um, I thought would be a nice reference to the cannibalism on, on the raft, and added a little uh, rat for, for flavor. So every painting is through the lens of the history of ecology. Alfred Russell Wallace, who was a great Victorian naturalist. When he was 24, he went to uh, Brazil to collect specimens for four years, and on his way back, on this ship called the Brig Helen, it caught fire, and he lost everything. And there's a wonderful account of birds flying into the fire and watching his specimens drift away and sink to the bottom of the ocean. And then the painting of the Titanic is there's a chest that was recovered uh, from the bottom of the ocean, and then a portrait of a cat and a rat sitting on debris looking at the ship sinking. So I always thought that that was an interesting substitution of you know, a witness for these types of endeavors. These are two very well-known maritime disasters from the early-ish 20th century, the Lusitania, the passenger ship that was torpedoed by the Germans in um, the First World War. Um, and then, of course, the USS Indianapolis that was made famous by Quint's fabulous speech written by John Milius and Jaws. When I was thinking about these two um, images I was, that I was going to do my own version of, I thought, why not think about individual passengers that weren't considered what happened to some of the domestic animals? on this ship, pets and what have you, and it has so much poignant literary um, baggage, the canary in the coal mine and stuff like that, so I thought that would make a perfect uh, foil for the cat that can't really reach the canary or find its way to safety. I thought about this idea of being in this very alien landscape, which is underwater, where you couldn't feel more helpless. The sailors that were on that ship were you know, decimated by um, oceanic white tip sharks. And I wanted to create this world where the things that were possibly going to save you were out of reach and everything was elusive and impossible to, 
escape from anything but the sharks. The sharks were basically the only thing that were available. I think the world's a fascinating, interesting place, and you know, our place in it is, um, you know, has some you know, triumphal moments and some very uh, uh, disappointing moments that have ended in complete failure and disgrace, and what's more exciting way to articulate that than a shipwreck?